every firefighter between here and Invercargill and here in Dunedin are all volunteers. My name's Cameron, uh, I'm a volunteer firefighter for the Wanaka Fire Brigade. I'm a machine operator and digger operator uh, during the summertime, and in winter I'm a snowmaker and machine operator up the mountain. I always joke, because uh, I joined when I was at school, uh, was to get out of school, um, which was, it worked. You never know when it's going to happen, so you could be at work, you could be at home doing family things, out on a push bike ride. Phone goes off, we get an alert, and then straight away the siren goes off. That's the sound that everyone hears in town. And then we pretty much drop what you're doing, jump in the car and you drive to the station, go on the speed limit. We chuck our gear on, jump in the truck and pretty much get briefed uh, on the way to the call, what it is and what we're doing. We can be there anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours to sometimes days if it's a big call. Yeah, we have to have each other's back. I've been volunteering coming up seven years. We go to around 200 calls a year here in Wanaka, so that's a couple of times a week generally. We pretty much try and get here and get out the door within four to five minutes, so it's, it's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah, we're busy. We train every Monday night and then do lots of other courses and trainings and things like that as well. So we attend all sorts of incidents that I'm not sure everyone's aware of. We do obviously go to fires and grass fires and car accidents, but we also back up St John's. We did attend a tender birth recently, um, so we are broadening our horizons <laughs> with all the different medicals that we attend. We are all just like everyone else. We have jobs or we're self-employed. A lot of our brigade, like myself, are self-employed. I'm a full-time photographer. So there's a cost to leaving work and, and going to calls or going to a call in the middle of the night and then being tired the next day. So we have some very patient employers. I think there's definitely positives and negatives to growing up here and knowing a lot of the community. It's amazing because you can help people and, and I know that they love seeing a familiar face but it also can make things pretty tough when they're people you know. My name is Jenny Clark. I'm a florist and live between Harry and Monica. And we had a fire, it's coming up two years. It's been an interesting time since then. Jodie, who I'm actually quite good friends with. After the fire, I actually stayed at Jodie's a couple of nights and I had a wedding like two days afterwards. So she lent me her garage and her space and she let me just have run of being able to work out of there initially that straight after so it's not just like they come and help they actually put a roof over my head for a couple of nights. About 1.30 in the morning my daughter came into our room woke us up we awoke to a lot of smoke she looked out and down the end of the shed where we are there was great big flames panicked as you do when you see that inside your shed. We had a battery um, that was charging and it just kind of started and went up along here. We had a Remy kitchen that was on this wall that was being used for storage. So it just, yeah, went so quickly. I grabbed my phone, rang 111. They turned up, must have been about 15 minutes later. My partner, I didn't know what he was doing, trying to get him out. There was vehicles in the shed. He was trying to save them using fire extinguishers. None of them actually worked. Thankfully though, with the fire department getting here so quickly, they managed to save them. And obviously where we live, there's damage, but we've yeah, still got a roof over our head. Oh yeah, I was thinking about it this morning when I woke up and I was like, if it would have been two or three minutes later, I doubt that Andy and I would be still here. So yeah, when I think about that and think, yeah, with family and yeah. So what's, yeah, it makes you realize what's important. The first fatal call I went to, I just joined the brigade and I think I was 17. A car crash uh, on the Queensbury Highway. It was pretty intense um, for a start. I didn't really know what was happening. But um, you learn pretty quickly 
what to do and what's going on and everyone helps you and they've focused a lot on the mental uh, health side of things because they understand it's, it gets pretty stressful, you know, pretty serious things happen. It affects people differently. They provide a lot of counselling now. It helps everyone out. They're pretty big things to go through, especially some of the more nasty ones, the car accidents and things. Like any family, we, we have our ups and downs, but there's great support networks and things are really starting to change within fire and emergency to support our people and keep moving forwards with inclusivity and all those sorts of great things. The most common answer I'd say if you ask people why they do it is that they want to help the community and they want to give back. One guy in our brigade got in a car crash when he was young and, and rolled his car. I think after that he decided, yeah, one day I think that's something I should do to give back to the people that help me. A lot of the enjoyment from people is that it's volunteering and that they are happy to give up their time to do it and they wouldn't want to be paid. You don't do it for the recognition, you do it to help the community out and help people. At someone's worst possible time, you try and help them help make it better.